Hi, this is Brother Sean with eLearning Brothers. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you how to do um, positioning on the various uh, breakpoints within our Captivate uh, responsive projects. First thing I want to show you is how to add a shape and have that shape kind of stay in the same kind of spot throughout all the different views. Um, and then maybe actually a mobile view will show you how to actually remove it completely from the project. I'd also like to show you how to um, add an image over the top of that box and have that image always stay on top of the box and not um, changing from the different viewpoints or in between the different um, breakpoints having it break position. And then I'd like to show you how to add one of our cutout people pictures and have it not scale but keep itself in proportion throughout all three views. So the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to go ahead and just draw our background shape. Um, a lot of times we like to use boxes in our, our layout design um, boxes to help contain content like images or text. So I'm just going to go out here and just draw a very simple um, shape over the, the background um, and that would be a nice container to hold my content. With the shape selected I'm going to go to my positioning tab and what I'd like to do is I'd like to accomplish um, have this box always be 50 percent the width of my project um, I'm going to leave a little bit of space on the top, a little bit of space on the bottom, just as a design element. Um, and I liked it to, you know, as we go to the different breakpoints, I want to kind of stay um, at that 50%, and I want that little padding up at the top and the bottom. So I can see already on my tablet view, there's already a lot of space down here. So I need to make a few modifications. Now, best practice for me, I always like to make all my positioning changes first on the primary view. Let me tell you why. If you look at the positioning panel, you'll see these green boxes that highlight over the top of all of our settings over here. These are um, green, tied to the green over here for our primary view. When I go to tablet view, you see that <clears throat> it turns to a blue color. Now, if I would have made any modifications here, it will turn these to blue. Let me just do it right now, and then I'm going to start over in a minute. So now I broke these from the original primary view. So if I went back to primary view and I made some kind of modification here and then I go back, those modifications for these three elements would not, um, would not reflect here and I'd have to go and you know, potentially redo them here. And then same thing for mobile. The mobile is, is an orange color so if I go to positioning, these are all now tied to whatever I do on tablet view because I already modified the tablet view. Um, if I were to mo modify it here on the mobile view, they should turn orange. So they're kind of color coordinated based on the views. Um, my best practice is always to start with the primary view and get everything exactly how I want it in primary view. And then it saves me a lot of time when I have to uh, go back through the other views and make my modifications. Because hopefully I can get 90% um, you know, of it done on one view and then make a couple small tweaks for the other views. So I went ahead and redrew the shape because I wanted it to uh, um, um, you know, I want to start over so everything's tied to the primary view. I have not yet found a button, and I hope that Adobe Captivate puts this in one time, but just a, a reset. Um, I'd love to see just a reset um, back to the original primary view, um, kind of knocking out anything I might have done on tablet and anything I did on mobile. But until then, we'll do it this way. Um, so I want this uh, object to be flush on the right side. Um, so instead of using the left percent right here, I'm going to go and drop down this box on the right, select percent, and you'll notice that the left is no longer active, and I can make my adjustments off the right. And I'm going to go 0% on the right, which puts it right on the edge. I'm going to change my height, and I'm going to say, you know what, I want this thing to be 90% high. So 90% of the height of the whole project is going to be my shape. That leaves me 5 pixels top, 5 on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the top setting here, change it to 5, and I already know that my bottom will be set to 5. But um, So if the top's 5, I have 5 on the bottom, then there's 90 left over for my height, my, my, uh, height of my object. Next thing we're going to do is the width. I want this to be 50% because I want it to go exactly half of my project. And with those settings, as I scale down to tablet, it should maintain those same settings. The tablet view is a smaller width, but you'll notice that my box is still 50% of that, that width. 
still 90% of the height with 5% top and bottom. So as we change between all three views, we are maintaining that same percent ratio, and that's exactly what I wanted. I love how this is looking for primary and tablet. However, on mobile, I think that this is not going to be the best presentation for the mobile device. So I think what I'm going to do here with the object on mobile <clears throat> is I'm going to remove it from the view. And I'm just going to take it over to the side. And that way, on mobile view, mobile devices, they're, my, my end user will not see this black shape. And I will redesign this whole layout. All right, so that's um, how we do that black shape box. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to actually add an image that I want to live on top of that black box. So on um, primary view, I'm adding my image, positioning it how I'd like. I'd like it to kind of stay right in the center here. And let's just look at the default settings and see what it does. A lot of the positioning with the responsive Captivate 8 um, software is, is really just kind of playing with it until you find the right effect that you want. And as you play with it, you're going to get more familiar with how the settings work. So this particular image, I want to keep it actually with this auto height setting. So as the, as the stage gets smaller, as that width of it gets smaller, it's going to scale in size and it's going to maintain that aspect ratio. Um, one modification I think I'm going to make though is this particular image is a little bit smaller so as it goes to tablet, I don't want to shrink that much. So at this breakpoint, if I want, I can actually just make this image a little bit bigger here, reposition a little, so that when my users hit that breakpoint, it's going to pop back up to a bigger size. There's plenty of room for that, with that picture to be like that, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's important also in between transitions to make sure that everything looks correct. Um, so I'm not really scrubbing it. I wish there was a, a really easy way to scrub the timeline and really look at it without messing up your breakpoints. But if you just hit the buttons and kind of scale in between, you'll see how it looks in between device sizes. That's important because you, unless you know the exact dim dimensions of your end user, you want to make sure that it fits for any size in between these also. And then let's scale it down to the mobile phone. And it looks like in between that transition, it all looked pretty good. As it hits this breakpoint, though, that image is really small there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. So when you're on the mobile view, it's going to be a nice big image. And that black box will be gone. So adding images like this, I actually like the default settings of auto height and a percent width. So it works really well for that. Now I also have another image that I have hidden on my timeline that I wanted to show you how to position. These are one of our cutout people characters. So I've added this character in here and I've used this, just used the default settings just like the other image. And as I do it, you'll see that she gets really small. And I don't know if I really want it to, want it to be like that because she's just so small. I don't know if it's an effective use of that image. So what I like to show you how to do is how to maintain her, her size, but keep her in proportion. So what I'm going to do is, I think I would actually like to make her a little bit bigger. And I like to just kind of keep her the same size throughout these views. So with her selected, we go to position. And I'm going to change the height. Instead of having it auto, we're going to do a percent high. And just to show you what would happen if I left these both percent, she's going to get skewed because the, you know, the width and the height is changing here and we're saying to force it to be a certain percent. But rather do that, then we're going to change the height to percent and then the width to auto and that's going to maintain her, her width to always be in proportion with the height. And you notice how she'll just slide right on over. And maybe on this particular view, you know, maybe we want to make her a little bit bigger, and we might even change the hierarchy of the layers so that she sits. Have her come and sit up on top so she kind of overlaps it, and we can even, you know, position her over just a little bit like that. So once again, you can kind of play with these to get the right effect that you want. And, uh, yeah, that's how you do positioning with Adobe Captivate uh, responsive um, files. So thank you.